सो लेट्स टेक लुक एट सम इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑब्जेक्टिव क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द टॉपिक हाईवे प्लानिंग इन द सब्जेक्ट हाईवे इंजीनियरिंग सो लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर वन द क्वेश्चन इज सेंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ हाईवे प्लानिंग इज एंड ऑप्शन आर सेंग टू प्लान अ सेफ इफिशियंट नेटवर्क एंड टू एन्श्योर अ मिनिमम कॉस्ट ओके वी आर प्लानिंग फॉर अ सेफ्टी एंड इफिशियंसी ऑफ द नेटवर्क एंड वी आर ट्राइंग टू इन्वॉल्व मिनिमम कॉस्ट दैट इज मिनिमल फाइनेंशियल कंस्ट्रेंट देर फोर दिस इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ हाईवे प्लानिंग देन टू डिवाइड ओवरऑल प्लान इन टू फेजेस टू डिसाइड प्रायोरिटीज एंड टू वर्कआउट सुटेबल फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम ऑल्सो वी आर टॉकिंग हियर अबाउट फेजिंग ऑफ द कंस्ट्रक्शन प्रोसेस ऑफ हाईवे देन डिसाइडिंग द प्रायोरिटीज एंड वर्किंग ऑन द फाइनेंस दैट इज बजेट ओके देर फोर दिस इज ऑल्सो ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ हाईवे प्लानिंग टू प्लान फॉर अ फ्यूचर रिक्वायरमेंट एंड टू कंस्ट्रक्ट रोड्स इन प्लान पीरियड येस वी डू हैव अ प्रॉपर इंजीनियरिंग प्लानिंग फॉर द फ्यूचर रिक्वायरमेंट एज वेल एज द करंट कंस्ट्रक्शन देर फोर दिज ऑल ऑप्शन स्टैंड करेक्ट इन रिगार्ड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ हाईवे प्लानिंग दैट्स वाई वी विल गो विथ ऑप्शन डी दैट इज ऑल ऑफ द अब ओके सो लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर नेक्स्ट पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ ट्रेंड्स पर कैपिटा इनकम डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड इंडस्ट्रियल फील्ड्स आर कंसिडर्ड इन फिल इन द ब्लैंक ऑफ प्लानिंग सर्वे ओके सी लेट सी वॉट द ऑप्शन आर सींग सी फाइनेंशियल स्टडीज आर रिलेटेड टू मोर लाइक बजेटिंग एंड एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ सम बजेट्स फॉर द करंट और ऑन गोइंग प्रोजेक्ट देन रोड यूज स्टडीज आर मोर रिलेटेड टू ट्रैफिक फ्लो कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स और ट्रैफिक इंजीनियरिंग देन इंजीनियरिंग स्टडीज आर मोर रिलेटेड टू properties of soil then properties of that area geography geology of that area okay topography of that area okay all these planning phases are included in engineering studies okay therefore economic studies is the one that takes care of population growth trend is there or per capita income is there or development of relevant field in that specific area okay all these things are taken in consideration are taken in due consideration in economic studies okay the answer here is economic study therefore population growth trends per capita income development of agriculture and industrial fields are considered in economic studies of planning survey all right let's move to question number next okay which of the following aspect is considered in engineering studies of planning survey okay see we consider traffic flow pattern in traffic studies okay road use studies traffic studies are taken in traffic studies then origin and destination studies are taken in planning and existing facilities in area such as agriculture is there or already existing roads are there all these things are considered in planning survey okay but we are specifically talking about engineering studies of planning survey so in engineering studies we take care of properties of soil are there topography of the area is there or geography or geology of the area is there okay strength of metal available in that road is there okay all these constraint which are generally engineering subjects which are vastly spread over that region okay are taken in consideration in engineering studies okay in topographic and soil surveys we are going to study the properties of soil the strength of soil the types of soil and in topography we are going to consider the natural and artificial features which are already present in that area means whatever aspect that you are going to view with engineering point of view are taken in engineering studies of planning survey okay therefore topo topographic and soil surveys are considered in engineering studies of planning survey all right so let's move to question number next which of the following drawing plan shows desired lines of road obtained from traffic volume and origin and destination study see desired line means for example this is location a and this is let's say location b then there are multiple options available with respect to having a road that connects point a and b okay these are the possible outcomes okay now out of this possible outcome there may be some river there may be some obstacle such as hill is there there may be some existing man made feature such as railway track is there then the desired lines are the one which are the most beneficial having least 
barriers in between them are those what desired line therefore this line may be a desired line this line may be a desired line with respect to traffic volume and origin destination study okay so plan 4 is the one that shows what desired lines of road obtained from traffic volume and origin destination studies all right so let's move to question number next in fill in the blank Optimum road length is calculated for an area based on the concept of obtaining maximum utility per unit length of road. Okay, saturation system is the one. Okay, saturation system is the one that takes care of optimum length. Okay, and that optimum length of road is calculated for an area based on concept of obtaining maximum utility per unit length of road. Okay, saturation system is the one. Okay. The traffic, the vehicle get to the point that they are saturated over that system so that we can retrieve the data regarding how to put the road to its maximum use. Okay, it is saturation system. Let's move to question number next. Okay, existing details of an area such as topography is there, road network is there, commercial activities are shown in plan one of road planning drawing. Okay, what plan one shows? all the existing features which are natural or man-made okay they will be showing topography that is uh, let's say forests are there vegetation cover is there type of rock is there okay all these things are shown in topography then existing road network okay existing road network in previously constructed road plans may be there then commercial activities such as uh, industries are there then shops are there then some product manufacturing companies are there all these things are shown in plan one of the road planning drawings okay then traffic or road use studies do not make use of volume data okay traffic and road use studies we are focusing on the word traffic and road use study see they do not make use of location and classification of existing study so what we do study in traffic and road use studies is accident analysis rate of accident accident prone zones all these things are studied in accident analysis okay then traffic flow pattern traffic flow pattern means origin and destination studies then what kind of vehicular traffic is going to a specific is generating from a specific origin and going to the specific destination all these things are studied in traffic flow pattern okay in origin and destination studies the same thing we are doing okay the specific kind of purpose of travel okay all these things are studied for origin and destination studies all these things such as accident analysis traffic flow pattern and origin and destination studies data are considered in traffic or road use studies okay then let's go to question number next financial studies in highway planning are important since it provide data regarding c do they provide data regarding population distribution no do they provide data with respect to future trend of road network no this is a kind of separate study we do not take it in financial studies okay in financial studies we are going to consider all the income sources that the project is going to generate okay whatever the revenue sources that the project is going to generate are studied in financial studies okay Therefore, option is B for this specific question. So, we are having the question as Rural Road Development Plan Vision 2025 has an objective of. Okay, remember whenever you are getting asked the question regarding Rural Road Development Plan Vision 2025, the first thing you have to look for the three phase planning. Okay, the option with three phase planning. Okay, let's say. Let's see what option is saying three phase planning. Yes, this one is the option. Okay, and the three phases are divided in connection of area with population more than 1000, then the population with more than 500 and less than 500. Okay, more than 1000, then more than 500, and then less than 500 are the three phases that vision 2025 is going to take care in each phase okay therefore the correct option here is option d okay connecting every area with population more than thousand 
more than 500 and less than 500 in three phases with basic access with basic access means at least metal road will be provided over there okay so that was all regarding the today's topic that is highway planning so so let's talk about highway alignment and the subject is highway engineering let's move to question number 1 the correct order of the following stages of engineering survey for highway alignment is okay and we have been provided with reconnaissance map preliminary and final location survey okay the first thing that we do while carrying out engineering survey that we carry out map study okay and now what we study in map see even before visiting the field we can have the maps available with us so that we can have alignments that avoid natural barriers are there such as hills are there or rivers are there where bridge construction may be possible but the first thing that you do during map study is you take a rough analysis where the possible alignments can be done where the possible alignments can be lined out okay then we go for reconnections okay in reconnections we go to the field and see the future study the future such as soil is there geology is there or sources of material for construction of the road project is there okay all these things are studied in reconnection survey then in preliminary survey we go for available alignments okay the third stage is preliminary survey in that we carry out study regarding available alignments and after that we carry out final location survey in which we go for the final planning and construction project details okay therefore the option that correctly depicts the stages in highway engineering survey are option c is there okay map study reconnaissance preliminary survey and final location so these are the stages that we carry out in highway alignments engineering survey map reconnaissance preliminary survey and final location okay so let's go to question number next obligatory points in highway alignment are okay and the given options are point through which alignment is to pass okay and option b is saying point through which alignment should not pass now see what obligatory points in highway alignment are see a town intermediate town is there or village is there or a hill pass is there by which or a mountain pass is there by which the highway alignment can go is the obligatory point that the alignment should pass okay the alignment should pass through a town so that connectivity of the town may increase or connectivity of the village may increase okay and there are some points through which alignment should not at all pass the points are water logged areas or marsh areas okay now the problem with water logged or marsh areas is that the maintenance cost of road project when they are passing through water logging areas or marshy lands is more therefore obligatory points can be divided into two desirable one and undesirable one means point through which the alignment should pass and point through which the alignment should not pass that's why we will go with option c okay because obligatory points consist of both the things should and should not okay with this let's move to question number next okay alignment of a highway should not pass through okay we are looking at the obligatory points again okay but here should not pass through kind of obligatory point we have to look intermediate town yes it should pass through intermediate town if mountain pass is available for example such a mountain or hill is there and by the side of that mountain if the alignment can go then it's all right we can have our alignment passing through that mountain pass but the problem is with water logged area okay water logged area cause problem in the road cross section road material and the stability of that road because they affect the road material and road construction process also we are trying to avoid water logging problem areas here marshy land areas here therefore highway alignment should not pass through what water logged area okay let's go to question number next okay collecting general characteristics of the area and choosing possible alternative alignments by conducting a rapid survey is done in see we carry out 
multiple alignment studies for example this is the two points that we are targeting for connecting by using a road or by using alignment and from map study we have drawn out some possible alignments okay we have chalked out some possible alignment by using which we can connect these two points okay there is no need that the alignment is straight like this it can be something like this okay but in general what we are doing we are carrying out a survey for having the possible probable alignments okay now for collecting the general characteristics of the area such as natural features are there or artificial features are there and choosing possible alternative alignment for example if we are chalking out 10 number of alignments in map study then in recognitions we are going to look for 5 6 or 7 possible alignments at which the probability of road construction will be more okay we are going we will be finalizing out of those five to six to seven alignments okay this specific study is done in recognition survey okay we are doing this thing in the recognition survey okay final location survey and realignment survey come after these recognitions and preliminary survey okay preliminary survey also comes after recognition survey the first thing we will do after map study key map study is what recognition survey okay so with this let's move to question number next okay finalizing the best alignment from all consideration is done in okay when we are saying all consideration we are talking about the natural barriers the artificial features which are available the topography the soil the geology the geography okay all these considerations are studied then we do finalize the best alignment with this consideration in preliminary survey okay after map study is done after recognition survey is done we will go with what preliminary survey okay and after that we will go with final surveys and realignment surveys okay so let's go to question number the next with this fill in the blank shows all the proposed and existing roads and important places to be connected okay key map is the one that shows all the proposed and existing roads which are available in the given area and the important points which are to be connected okay a, a key map uh, is something like this for example point a point b point c point d is there and these are connected with some roads then it will be showing all the existing roads and the remaining places and the available places which are meant to be connected while carrying out this new survey project okay this new road construction project okay key map is the one okay let's move to question number next general topography of the area where highway alignment passes can be studied using index map okay the general topography means the vegetation cover okay the kind of mountain the kind of hill the kind of topography means all the natural and man-made features inside the area are mentioned in the topographical map and these specific maps in case of highway alignment studies are given in index map we call them as index map okay let's go to question number next okay existing roads may be realigned for why we are realigning road okay existing road may be realigned means it can be redesigned reconstructed or realignment for example existing road is between point a and b okay on plan or already in construction okay it may be on this alignment but for military requirement for defense purpose is there for military specific requirement is there it can be realigned okay then avoidance of water logging in monsoon okay one alignment may be selected in one specific season where we may not come to know that the problem of water logging or getting the marshal land situations are there okay that's why we can realign the road in order to avoid the water log areas okay then correction of undesirable undulations so some uphills or downhills or undulations or irregularities of the topography of or of the surface of the road may be there that's why we can realign the given road okay we can skip the given alignment and we can have alternate alignment okay it is keeping the undesirable undulations or it is keeping the marshal land or it may be redesigned realigned with respect to the requirements given by military okay therefore all of the above 
reasons are responsible for realignment of road okay realignment may also be done with respect to the budget constraint or with respect to some points okay if for an example if a specific location is to get connected okay if a specific location is meant to be connected in the given alignment in the given new proposed alignment then the road may be realigned for that one specific location okay we will balance all the things such as budget is there okay then financial constraints are there the planning phase is there all these things will be balanced and then we will go with realignment of given alignment okay so with this let's move to question number next in highway alignment which of the following plan is drawn to study datum line existing ground surface and drainage crossing is it detailed cross section no is it detailed plan no road intersection plan no we go with longitudinal cross section okay longitudinal cross section means the map will be something like this okay and in that map we will be able to study the cross section along the length of the road length of the road means along the direction of the alignment okay therefore it will be having the cross section and it will be showing where filling is to be done okay where datum line is okay and where undulations is there or the existing condition of ground surface and drainage crossing okay all these things can be studied in longitudinal cross section okay this is the answer so that was all regarding highway alignment in next so let's talk about geometric design of highway or highway geometric design okay so let's move to question number 1 if pavement surface is slippery and wet driving wheels of vehicle revolve more than corresponding longitudinal movement along the road is called as we do call it as slip okay for example we are having a vehicle like this okay this is a car all right and now what is happening driving wheels of the vehicle are revolving more than the corresponding longitudinal movement okay for example this is the direction in which the vehicle is going then along the longitudinal movement okay means traveling across the road okay traveling on the road requires some revolution and if the vehicle is having more number of revolution of the driving wheel then that specific phenomenon that specific thing is called as slip okay the vehicle is said to be slipping okay across the or on the surface skidding is something else for example if you brake suddenly if your vehicle is having disc brake okay hydraulic disc brake like this and if you suddenly brake without having the abs system in your vehicle then what is going to happen is you are obviously going to skid over the surface okay and the thing drift here drift is a kind of skill set that the most race drivers have they have to develop in order to negotiate the turn in order to maneuver the turn with very high efficiency okay that thing is drift if you have seen the film tokyo drift then you will be having the total knowledge of the thing drifting it is a skill set skidding means breaking and suddenly start getting dragged over the surface okay slipping means more revolution of the vehicle than required to move over a longitudinal surface all right with this let's move to question number next worn out tires provide more friction on fill in the blank pavement whereas new tires provide more friction on fill in the blank pavement okay and the pavement the prefixes that we have to fill it up are dry wet wet dry smooth rough now see worn out tire worn out tire means what let's see uh, how new tire looks and how a worn out tire looks worn out tire looks something like this it is ultra smooth okay and a new tire has that protrudings okay that rubber protrudings that they provide grip on on the surface now in order to have friction see the vehicle stability over the road or any tire stability over the road is because of friction if friction is not there the thing is going to slip away it is going to skid away on that surface now friction is the thing that we are going to require for having stability of the vehicle now see how this worn out tire is acting behaving for example we are having a ultra smooth surface okay the surface is ultra smooth and our tire is ultra smooth this worn out tire is ultra smooth now what will happen if braking is taking place or if more accelerator has been pressed then what will happen this specific worn out tire is going to slip or if brake is applied this worn out tire will cause skidding now if we 
have a dry surface okay if we are having a dry surface that is going to provide more friction okay in case of wet surface friction between the worn out tire and the road is going to get reduced now if the surface is dry what will happen more friction will be offered to the tire and even when the worn out tire is not having that much grip on the road the surface friction the road surface friction is going to take care of the stability of the vehicle okay that's all regarding what worn out tire now let's take a look at this new brand new tire now this brand new tire has this rubber kind of protruding the extra grip uh, making sure that the tire is going to be there be safe on the road now the surface is wet okay what we just said that we require friction in order to achieve stability there should be some grip in between the road and the tire now since the road is wet okay since the road is wet the gaps on the road have been filled up with the lubricant lubricant is what water okay now the road is slippery but our tire is how brand new it is having more grip over the road that's why when we are talking about wet pavement we desire to have a new tire okay that's why worn out tires provide more friction on what dry pavement okay and brand new tire new tire provide more friction on wet pavement okay enough for this let's go to question number next bump integrator is used to determine rutting of the road warping of the road uneven index then height to be provided for speed bump no it is not rutting of the road nor warping nor height to be provided now let's see how what bump integrator is see let me first show what bump integrator is for example just take a vehicle okay let's let's say this suv is there and there is a cart okay there is a cart that has a single wheel and that has some electronic chips and a lcd screen installed in it and this pneumatic tire is installed in this cart now what this device is called this device is called as bump integrator okay this is what bump integrator and now what this bump integrator actually does see whatever the uneven okay whatever the slope uneven slope undulations are there this bump integrator is going to record with respect to what with respect to horizontal length okay with respect to horizontal length what it is going to record undulations or unevenness okay so this bump integrator is put to use for measuring the unevenness index of the road okay how unevenness index will be reported see more number of undulation per unit horizontal length will be more uneven okay less or zero unevenness it so yes, actually it is not possible to have zero undulations or unevenness but less number of undulation of hills and downhill slopes on the road will be reported as the road is how it is less uneven it is more perfect okay so that's all about what bump integrator okay then camber or cross slope is provided in order to okay why we are providing this specific shape okay for example this is the cross section of road okay these are shoulders and all these thing we will see these things later but let's focus upon this thing okay this slope that we have provided is what a camber camber means what a cross slope a cross slope is provided in order to ensure sufficient skid resistance in rainy season yes what will happen in rainy season the water will be on the surface and the water will get drain off the pavement okay that's why cross slope or camber is helping the skid resistant in rainy season by draining of the water of the pavement then prevent the entry of water into bituminous pavement since no water will be stagnant on the surface of the road how it will get an opportunity in order to penetrate into the bituminous pavement no it won't that's why it will prevent the entry of water into bituminous pavement therefore this is the purpose of providing a camber or cross slope okay slope across cross section all right so before we move to one question this specific question i would like you to request for the like okay please put the press the like button 
प्लीज प्रेस सम कमेंट प्लीज टाइप डाउन सम कमेंट इफ द वीडियो इज सम वॉट लिटरली वन परसेंट टू परसेंट हैज बिन बेनिफिशियल फॉर यू प्लीज प्रेस द लाइक बटन नाउ वाई आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस लाइक बटन इन बिटवीन द वीडियो सी If you are pressing the like button, if you are sharing the video, then the YouTube algorithm gets to know that the video is good and is beneficial for the viewers which are actually watching the video. Okay? Do press like. I don't uh, regularly. I don't even never ask for the likes and subscribe thing. But I do have to because the views are dropping, the subscriptions are going. Okay? I am working hard behind this video. I do want my viewers, my students to please, please press like. do comment something if you find this video useful okay okay leave all this first focus on the question impervious surface requires camber value of about okay how much camber value we do require for impervious surface remember this is a standard question standard value is there 1.7 to 2% okay 1.7 to 2% is the camber value or a cross slope value for impervious surfaces okay let's move to question number next In concrete pavement, shape of camber provided it is it parabolic, is it straight line, is it combination of straight and parabolic? Let's see. Parabolic is something like this. Okay, for example, this is shoulder and this is the road we are having. Then if you observe the surface carefully, then it assumes the shape of parabola. Okay, this is what a parabolic camber. Then. let's see how a straight camber looks like for example again this is the two shoulders and in between a straight line slope is being provided okay this is a straight line slope now combination of straight and parabolic combination of straight and parabolic means there will not be a specific point specific crown apex over there okay it will be the combination of both okay it will be the combination of two straight line across the slope we are actually exaggerating this shape this is not the actual shape of a camber over the road okay and the middle portion will be a parabola okay this two are what straight line and this is what a parabola okay this two are what straight lines okay and this is what a parabola now in concrete pavement we tend to provide the straight line camber or straight line cross slope because it puts the it involves the ease of having that camber okay it is possible to have parabolic or straight line parabolic combination in case of bitumen or tar road but in concrete pavement to facilitate to make the process of laying the concrete pavement easily what we are doing we are just having a straight line simplest kind of cross slope okay it looks something like this i am just exaggerating this diagram it won't look this much okay this is kind of the slope they have cross slope they have when they are having a concrete pavement okay it is not this much all right enough for camber let's go out of the following different types of road surface which of the following requires highest camber value in low and high rainfall areas okay out of the following different types of road surfaces okay we are having we are been provided with different kinds of road surfaces and which of the following requires highest camber value in less as well as in higher end fall area see cement concrete pavement do not require that much high camber value high bituminous pavement won't be requiring thin bituminous pavement won't be requiring the wbc macadam pavement okay wb okay not wbc wbm okay wbm will be requiring the maximum cross slope value because they don't have the coating of bitumen or any impervious substance laid upon them that's why they are the first they are the most prone for getting damage for receiving damage from rain water that's why they will be requiring highest camber value in low whether it is low or whether it is higher in fall okay let's go to question number next what will happen if you are providing excess camber okay excess camber causes formation of cross ruts on pavement okay due to water and due to vehicles also okay now see what is going to happen for example this is the road which has been provided with high camber value now this camber value this specific zone is kind of weak because it is not having that much of thickness okay this section gets weaker okay now what will happen because of rainfall because of continuous rainfall and because of the continuous traffic it is going to get stress and it will form cross rut cross rut means what it will be getting damages it will be receiving the grooves on the okay it will be receiving grooves channels on it 
okay this is what called as cross rut okay therefore excess camber is causing formation of cross ruts on the pavement due to water and also due to vehicles okay highest point on the camber is known as i think we just uttered the word okay try to remember we said something regarding highest point on the camber for example this is the parabolic camber we are providing on a road now this specific point this known as what apex it is crown it is zenith it is curve it is curve is not even a case curve is kind of different component of road okay see this three word apex crown zenith means the topmost position but in case of arch also and in case of camber also we do call this specific point as what crown okay crown remember highest point on the camber also in building construction material remember that the highest point on extra dose of the arch is called as what a crown all right so that was all for the video don't so let's talk about geometric design of highway and the subject we are talking about is highway engineering first question in front of us is saying irc recommends width of carriageway to be fill in the blank meters per lane for a multi lane pavement okay for multi lane pavement the per length width required by irc is 3.5 meter okay the width required is 3.5 meter remember it standard one 3.5 meters for multi lane pavement then minimum width of traffic separator required on a rural highway recommended by irc is 5 meter okay the traffic separator needs to be 5 meter wide as per the recommendations given by irc okay Let's go to question number next, and the question is saying in case of narrow traffic separator, to reduce the glare from oncoming traffic from opposite lane, what we do? Can we increase the height of separator? No, not practical solution. Lane of heights are varied. No, extremely impractical solution. Shrubs are planted on separator in narrow strip. Now say yes. You have seen this. We all have seen this. That for example, this is one lane. This is traffic separator. Okay. this is the narrow traffic separator this is another lane okay i am exaggerating the value of camber in order to just exhibit that these are nothing but lane 1 and lane 2 okay this is lane 1 and this is lane 2 now in order to restrict the glare glare means what it is the sharp light of headlights of vehicle for example this is the oncoming traffic then this will be the sharp light which will be exhumed by which will be produced by the oncoming vehicle and the vehicle which is going in this direction will have its vision the driver's vision will be obscured it will be obstructed by this glare by this sharp light waves now in order to block the passage of the light from one lane to other what we can do we can either build a wall we can either increase the separator's height okay traffic separator height or we can vary the height of the lanes but it is totally impractical the simplest thing that can we can do is what we can do we can have shrubs planted over there what we will do we will keep some soil inside the separator and we will plant shrubs okay now what shrubs mean shrubs mean the small heighted trees their height ranges from 1 to 1.5 meter okay and when the shrubs grow out of the separator they are simply cut they are mechanically simply cut and their height is maintained so that line from this lane do not get passed over to this lane so that the vision doesn't get affected okay we are planting shrubs this is the simplest possible available solution okay let's go to question number next type of curb provided in built up areas adjacent to footpath which is consider with considerable pedestrian traffic is barrier type curb now let's see what curb is see this specific heightened kind of footway is called as what curb okay now barrier type curb will take care of the vehicle not to get entered on the curb okay no vehicle will be able to mount the curb that's why it will be very very useful to pedestrian to have their safety maintained okay this specific type of curb is called as barrier type of curb that doesn't allow any vehicle to mount over them okay it provides safety to the pedestrian who are going by foot then let's go to question number 9 which type of curb allows vehicle to enter shoulder at 
लो स्पीड ओके विच टाइप ऑफ कर्ब आर अलोविंग द व्हीकल टू एंटर द शोल्डर सी इट इज द लो टाइप कर्ब ओके द हाइट ऑफ द कर्ब इज सच लो दैट इफ विथ लो स्पीड इफ यू आर पुटिंग द व्हीकल इन फर्स्ट गियर देन यू कैन इजीली माउंट दैट स्पेसिफिक कर्ब ओके इट कैन अलाउ इट कैन अलाउ इट विल अलाउ द व्हीकल टू एंटर द शोल्डर विथ ऑफ द रोड ओके दिस इज द कर्व एंड दिस इज द शोल्डर विथ दिस इज वॉट शोल्डर द एक्सटेंडेड पोर्शन ऑफ द रोड ओवर विच पेवमेंट इज नॉट देअर बट सम एरिया इज लेफ्ट आउट इज कॉल्ड एज वॉट शोल्डर ओके ओनली दिस लो टाइप कर्व provides this specific facility option c is the one all right let go to question number next what it is saying submerge type curve provides it provides barrier to vehicle no this is barrier type curve okay confinement to flexible pavement yes it is parking line bound vehicle no all of the above option gets ruled out now let's see what submerge type curve is for example this is the pavement we are talking about which is having a submerge type curve curve then it will be submerged inside the or along the edges of the pavement okay it will be inside the pavement it won't be seen directly protruding over the surface or elevating over the surface okay and it does provide confinement to flexible pavement it acts as border or kind of margin for the flexible pavement okay submerged type curve provides confinement to flexible pavement okay minimum shoulder width as recommended by irc is 2.5 meter okay for example this is the lane we are talking about then this is the shoulder width okay this is what the shoulders now this shoulder act as extra width okay they are acting as the uh, supplement kind of road width okay this is what a shoulder as as this is the pavement we are talking about okay let's go to question number next okay we just saw shoulder and now let's see the function of shoulder function of the shoulder is to act as extra width of carriage way we just said this point in case of emergency we use the shoulder for parking or for repair works or uh, for any uh, other manner in which we don't want to disturb the ongoing traffic on the road on the main carriage way okay we will park our vehicle over that shoulder therefore act as an extra width yes we do use that shoulder then provide accommodation for disabled vehicle yes if the vehicle is failing if the truck vehicle any kind of vehicle is failing then it can park themselves on the shoulder okay no need to obstruct the carriage way this is what carriage way or lane this is the shoulder okay over the shoulder the vehicle can be parked then provide structural stability to edges of flexible pavement yes they do act also additionally with uh, just like the curb they are acting as confinement or they are providing the excess structural stability to the edges of flexible pavement okay they do hold the flexible pavement in its very position that's why all of the above looks good as a option looks good no it is actually the option okay then guard rails are provided along the edges of the shoulder in embankment okay when height of the fill exceeds fill in the blank meter okay let's first see what is the height 3 meter is the answer okay now let's see what guard rails is the thing is for example if this is the normal road that was going perfectly balanced in cutting and filling now the height the elevated portion comes where the filling is exceeding 3 meter height the elevation of filling is 3 meter now in order to make sure of safety over there what we will do we will provide guard rails over there guard rail means it is just acting as margin or boundary so that the vehicle may that the vehicle that may be toppling over that may be going over that specific boundary will be restricted to be inside the carriage way or over the shoulder only okay it is acting as a safety purpose it is just having its safety purpose over there okay remember when the height of fill of of road in embankment exceeds 3 meter height elevation then we are going to provide this metallic guard rails okay let's go to question number next driveways are provided for highways in order to allow the vehicle to take over no this is not the overtaking zone 
स्टॉपिंग क्लियर ऑफ द कैरियज वे नो ड्राइव वेज आर नथिंग बट द एक्सेस द सप्लीमेंट्री रोड प्रोवाइडेड सो दैट वी कैन हैव आर एक्सेस विथ पेट्रोल पम्प और फ्यूल स्टेशन इज देयर और सर्विस स्टेशन इज देयर ओके मीन्स अलॉन्ग द रोड इफ वी वॉन्ट टू एक्सेस सम स्पेसिफिक लोकेशन विच इज कमर्शियल वन और एनी काइंड ऑफ थिंग इज देयर देन वी यूज द ड्राइव वे ओके देर फोर ऑप्शन सी इज द वन इट एक्ट एज कनेक्शन विथ कमर्शियल एस्टैब्लिशमेंट सच एज फ्यूल स्टेशन इज देयर और सर्विस स्टेशन इज देयर देन फिल इन द ब्लैंक इज प्रोवाइडेड रनिंग पैरल टू हाईवे इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोवाइड कंट्रोल एक्सेस टू प्रॉपर्टीज येस इट इज कॉल्ड एज फ्रंट रेज रोड फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज द मेन स्पीड वे हाईवे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट देन देर विल बी अ पैरल लेन ओके विच विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग सम एक्सेस टू गो टू नियर बाय विसिनिटी नियर बाय सिविलाइजेशन इज देयर नियर बाय इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट एरिया इज दिस ओके दीज रोड रन पैरल दे डो नॉट हैव फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ अ प्रॉपर्टी इज देयर इफ अ इंडस्ट्रियल जोन इज देयर देन फ्रॉम द मेन रोड फ्रॉम द मेन हाईवे देर इज नो सच ऑपसेट रोड ओके देर इज नो सट ऑपसेट रोड और देर इज नो कर्वेचर और एनी काइंड ऑफ पैरल रोड इज प्रोवाइडेड वी प्रोवाइड अनादर सप्लीमेंट्री पैरल रोड एंड फ्रॉम दैट पैरल रोड वी टेक आउट सम माइनर रोड सो दैट वी कैन हैव कनेक्टिविटी विथ सम प्रॉपर्टीज ओके एंड दीज स्पेसिफिक रोड आर कॉल्ड एज फ्रंटेज रोड ओके सो दैट वॉज ऑल रिगार्डिंग जोमेट्रिक डिजाइन Perception, intellection, emotion, and volition, which is PIEV theory in highway engineering. Let's see some important multiple choice questions regarding this topic. So the first question is saying, side distance may get restricted due to, okay? It may get restricted due to horizontal curve, okay? It may get restricted due to vertical curve. then it may get restricted due to uncontrolled intersection and thus since all the three options are right we will go with option d all of the above then absolute minimum side distance is generally known as stopping side distance okay absolute minimum side distance is equal to what ssd which is stopping side distance then side distance available for a driver depends on height of the object above the road surface for example this is the road surface this is the vehicle then if any object is there if any divider is there if any intersection is there whatever the object is in on, is in front of him on the road surface it depends on that object's height okay then height of the driver's eye above the road surface the position of driver's eye above the road surface will also be responsible for available side distance then any feature of the road ahead whatever be the feature of the road ahead whether it is horizontal curve whether it is vertical curve whatever be the feature of the road ahead will also be responsible for available side distance for the driver that's why all of the above mention options are correct that's why we will go with option d then stopping side distance that is ssd do not depend upon okay is independent of what do it depend on total reaction time of the driver it does okay therefore it cannot be the option speed of the vehicle and brake efficiency stopping side distance is dependent of speed of the vehicle as well as brake efficiency of the vehicle therefore it cannot be the answer friction between the road and tires yes what is the amount of friction that is taking place in between the tire what is the condition of road have the tires been worn out or are the tires new all these factors are going to play a major role in deciding the stopping side distance available for the driver that's why this cannot be the option thereby we will come to a conclusion that none of the above options are here for dependency of stopping side distance okay option d is the one in piev theory time required to understand the situation c piev theory means p stand for perception i stand for intellection e stands for emotion time and v and v stand for volition time 
परसेप्शन मीन्स रिसीविंग द प्रेजेंट सिच्युएशन ओके इंटरप्रेटिंग द गिवन सिच्युएशन ऑन द रोड इज कॉल्ड एज वॉट परसेप्शन इंटेलेक्शन मीन्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग द गिवन सिच्युएशन वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन इन फ्रंट ऑफ द ड्राइवर इज हिज इंटेलेक्शन टाइम द टाइम रिक्वायर्ड टू अंडरस्टैंड द सिच्युएशन इज इंटेलेक्शन टाइम देन इमोशन If the driver is angry, if the driver has frightened, if the emotion is fear, then that specific time to digest that situation will be emotion time. And volition time is the actual time that the driver takes in order to stop the vehicle. Means he will be applying brake, he will be putting his pedal on the accelerator. Whatever decision he is taking comes under volition time. Therefore, the time required to understand the situation will be. intellection time means he will be putting his brain to use to understand what's going on in front of him it is what intellection then in pi ev theory time taken by the driver for the final action that is application of brake is what volition time this is the final stage in pi ev theory where the driver will be carrying out the physical action that is either he might be putting his foot on the accelerator or brake or he might take the necessary action to avoid the circumstances okay it is what volition time all right let's move yes if the brake efficiency is 100% for a vehicle then on application of brake what is going to happen the vehicle has 100% skidding probability means the brake efficiency should be less means the brake should not be 100% effective just for example imagine if you are driving a bike if you are driving a car and if you put the disc brakes that is hydraulic disc brakes suddenly and the abs system anti brake lock system of your vehicle is off there are 100% chance that your vehicle is going to skid for that either the abs system should be on or the simplest solution for this is you should apply the brakes gradually if you apply the brake suddenly with full efficiency with 100% efficiency then your vehicle is going to get skid all right option b is the one then in order to avoid skidding what should be done yes we should apply the brakes gradually irrespective what kind of brakes you are using whether they are drum brakes whether they are hydraulic disc brakes you should apply them very very gradually then the second thing you should take care of is brake should not exceed braking force should not exceed frictional force between tire and the road yes if your the braking force is more than the friction value of tire and road then your vehicle is gonna skid that's why option a is right option b is right we will go with c okay coefficient of friction as suggested by indian road congress varies from memory question it is remember it 0.35 to 0.40 mu should be between 0.35 to 0.40 okay if v is speed of vehicle in meter per second f is design coefficient of friction small g is acceleration due to gravity then braking distance l in meter is given by remember it l is equal to v square divided by 2 into g into f okay the braking distance l in meter is given by what v square by twice gf okay let's move to question number next okay if v t is like distance in meter v speed of vehicle in meter per second f is design coefficient of friction that is mu okay then uh, g is acceleration due to gravity then stopping side distance okay stopping side distance on a level road is given by it is standard formula remember this sd is equal to vt plus v square by twice gf okay sd is equal to vt plus v square by twice gf then if it is like distance again v is speed of vehicle in meter per second f is design coefficient of friction and g is acceleration due to gravity and n is gradient then stopping side distance on a road is given by remember it sd or ssd is equal to vt plus v square by twice g and we have to slightly modify this formula that we saw previously 
and we have to incorporate n that is gradient here it will be f plus minus 0.01 n okay then overtaking side distance do not depend upon okay they do not depend on what they do depend on speed of overtaking vehicle they do depend on speed of vehicle being overtaken they do depend on speed of vehicle coming from opposite direction but there is nothing to do for with speed of vehicle behind the overtaking vehicle okay speed of vehicle behind the overtaking vehicle has no role in deciding what is the overtaking side distance available all right let's move to question number next okay on a two way road having two way traffic if v b is initial speed of overtaking vehicle t is reaction time v speed s is spacing a is average acceleration and t is equal to square root of 4s plus a then overtaking side distance is given by osd is given by this v b into t plus v b into capital t plus twice s plus small v into capital t okay remember standard formula is here then d1 is distance traveled by overtaking vehicle before overtake d2 is distance traveled by the overtaking vehicle during the overtake d3 is distance traveled by the one coming vehicle during the overtake then for divided highways for one way traffic regulation overtaking side distance is given by osd is equal to d1 plus d2 okay overtaking side distance is given by summation of d1 and d2 where d1 is distance traveled by overtaking vehicle before the overtake and distance traveled by an overtaking vehicle during the overtake okay minimum length of overtaking zone should be three times the safe overtaking side distance okay remember this minimum length of overtaking zone should be three times the safe overtaking side distance safe osd then generally intermediate side distance is provided as two times as that of stopping side distance okay intermediate side distance isd is equal to two times that of ssd intermediate side distance is twice that of ssd then for design of side distance condition that must be fulfilled for safety condition is enabling the approaching vehicle to change speed yes this should be done enabling the approaching vehicle to stop yes this should be done enabling the stop vehicle to cross a main road okay this condition should also be fulfilled therefore we will go with option d which is all of the above okay all of the above condition should be fulfilled for design of side distance okay at rotary intersection the minimum side distance should be equal to safe stopping distance okay one times okay 1.0 means is equal to safe stopping distance so that was all about pi ev theory all right let's talk about design of horizontal alignment and the subject we are dealing with is highway engineering let's move to question number 1 which of the following parameter do not depend on design speed side distance yes it is dependent therefore this cannot be the answer rate of super elevation provided is also dependent on design speed therefore this cannot be the answer then length of summit and valley car is also dependent on design speed therefore this cannot also be the answer therefore the answer we should tick is none of the above since all the parameters are dependent of design speed therefore independent parameters are not mentioned here therefore none of the above should be the answer also extra widening of the pavement length of horizontal transition curve these parameter also are dependent of dependent on upon design speed most geometric design elements do depend on design speed all right let's move to question number next impact factor or centrifugal ratio is given by okay it is given by p by w is equal to v square by gr where p is the centrifugal force in kilogram okay then w is weight of vehicle in kilogram okay v square or v it is the speed of vehicle in meter per second small g obviously it is acceleration due to gravity and it has value of 9.81 
meter per second square all right and r is the radius of curve in meter okay impact factor or centrifugal ratio is the ratio of centrifugal force to weight of vehicle all right let's move to question number next centrifugal force acting on a vehicle negotiating a horizontal curve causes tendency of overturning about outer wheels right then tendency of transverse skid okay now let's see a small diagram and let's try to identify these two parameters that is overturning tendency and skidding tendency for example this is a horizontal curve and this is the vehicle it is having four wheels like this okay the first thing that is tendency of overturning about outer wheel is along the outer set of vehicle okay the vehicle has a tendency to overturn about the outer set of wheels when it negotiates a horizontal curve also when the friction in between the wheels of the vehicle are having their value less than the centrifugal force then there is a tendency of transverse skidding means the vehicle is going to follow this direction and it will lose its control over the pavement it is going to skid and it will be going in this direction therefore there are two things that the centrifugal force causes one thing is overturning tendency okay the vehicle is going to topple and it will topple with respect to this line okay and when transverse skid will take place the value of friction is going to get less than centrifugal force that's why the vehicle will lose control over the surface and it will go in this direction all right therefore the answer we should take is both a and b okay let's move to question number next all right if e is rate of super elevation f is design value of lateral friction coefficient and v is speed of vehicle in meter per second r is radius of horizontal curve small g obviously 9.81 meter per second square then the general equation for super elevation is given by it is option a okay e plus f is equal to v square by gr till now we saw e is equal to v square by gr okay super elevations format is e is equal to v square by gr but additionally we have a friction value also over there okay friction needs to be also considered all right let's move to question number next okay what are the correct method or methods of attaining super elevation in field how we are going to attain super elevation when a vehicle is meant to negotiate a horizontal curve flattening the camber no camber is required thing therefore we cannot just flatten out the camber therefore this is the wrong thing elimination of crown of the camber yes this can be done then rotation of the pavement yes this can also be done widening the pavement at the curve no widening the pavement is not the solution for attaining super elevation therefore point number 4 is wrong therefore only point number 2 and 3 are correct therefore option c is the one we should go with okay now see how we are eliminating the crown and rotating the pavement for example this is the normal road having the crown and camber now what we can do we can carry the camber in this direction okay for example this is the kind of curvature we have been dealing with on the pavement this is the turn and this is the cross section of the road and what we can do we can shift the camber or totally eliminate it okay eliminating the camber will be looking like this okay and shifting the camber will be looking like this okay let's see for example this is the camber we just shifted it and we had more portion like this okay now another thing rotation of the pavement for example this is the normal pavement cross section therefore either we can rotate it along the center or along the outer edge okay rotating along the center looks something like this okay and rotating along the outer edge looks something like this okay this is the normal level okay and this is the normal level this is rotation along the center this is rotation along the outer edge okay the curvature is something like this okay this is the horizontal turn okay these are the methods either you can eliminate the camber or shift the camber 
okay crown of the camber not flattening the camber is not the thing you can shift the crown or you can eliminate the crown camber will always be there okay shifting the design of the camber is the solution and we can rotate the pavement widening the pavement and flattening the camber is not going to work all right let's move to question number next okay psychological widening of pavement at a horizontal curve is given by remember it it is the standard value standard formula w suffix ps that is psychological widening is equal to v by 9.5 square root of r okay v is velocity of vehicle r is radius of the horizontal curve okay psychological widening is done for introducing the comfort to the driver while he is negotiating a curve okay it also provides space for overtaking and it also enable crossing at the curve okay it is the obvious tendency to maintain more distance while you are negotiating a curve that's why extra width is required it is the psychological widening we are talking about okay let's move to question number next if wm is mechanical widening wph is psychological widening then total widening that is w is given by it is simply the summation of mechanical as well as psychological widening therefore option d will be the one yes we that is total widening is equal to mechanical plus psychological widening okay mechanical widening is taken for off tracking okay off tracking means when you are negotiating a curve on a vehicle four wheeled vehicle the real rear wheels not real the rear wheel are going to follow another track and the front that is turning wheel are going to follow another track therefore extra width is necessary for taking care of off tracking okay off tracking is the concept where rear wheel do not follow the same path as front wheel and psychological widening we just saw it is for comfort of driver while he is negotiating the turn for overtaking for crossing okay extra widening is enabled for a pavement where radius of the curve is less than 300 meter whenever radius of the curve which is inside the pavement is less than 300 meter we are going to provide the widening thing over there okay with this let's move to question number next which of the following is not a function of transition curve in horizontal alignment of a highway okay which is not the function c to enable gradual introduction of design super elevation is the function of transition curve yes to gradually introduce centrifugal force between tangent point and beginning of circular curve it is also a function to improve aesthetic appearance of the road it is also a function therefore the non functional parameters are not present here therefore we will go with option d none of the above okay also when we are providing a transition curve it is enabling the driver to steer gradually to steer comfortably okay therefore these are the many parameters that is many functions related to transition curve okay let's go to question number next IRC recommended transition curve is spiral lemnitz set cubic parabola or all of the above c indian road congress says that we should go with spiral transition curve now the reasons behind this c the spiral transition curve which is also known as clothoid remember the term clothoid the clothoid or the spiral transition curve that is spiral tc is satisfying all the requirements of an ideal transition curve okay you can literally call it as ideal transition curve and another usefulness of spiral transition curve is that it is easy to calculate and to set up in the field okay now both the things are very much useful for field parameter that's why IRC recommends the transition curve to be a clothoid or a spiral all right let's move to question number next the setback distance or clearance distance required from the center line of a horizontal curve for side distance depend upon do it depend upon required side distance yes 
रेडियस ऑफ हॉरिजेंटल कर आर इनवीटर यस लेंथ ऑफ द कर एल सी इनवीटर यस देर फोर इट इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन ऑल ऑफ द पैरामीटर्स मेन्शन इन द ऑप्शन ओके द सेट बैक डिस्टेंस और क्लियर डिस्टेंस इज द थिंग विच एंश्योर सेफ्टी इन साइड डिस्टेंस वेन द व्हीकल इज नेगोशिएटिंग अ हॉरिजोंटल कर ओके डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन प्रेजेंट ड्यूरिंग नेगोशिएशन ऑफ हॉरिजोंटल कर सच एज बिल्डिंग इज देयर ट्रीज इज ट्रीज आर देयर एक्सेट्रा पैरामीटर वेरी वेरियस फीचर्स आर देयर ओके ऑल द थिंग्स आर ऑब्स्ट्रक्शंस for negotiating a horizontal curve okay now this necessary distance the clearance distance which is also known as setback distance ensures the safety while we are negotiating a horizontal curve okay and it is dependent of side distance curve radius and curve length all right so let's see some important objective questions and their detailed explanation regarding design of vertical alignment okay in the last lecture we saw horizontal alignment design in this one we are going to see vertical alignment the subject is highway engineering let's move to the questions so the first one is saying which one of the following gradient is highest in value okay see let's first see what gradient is for example this is the leveled road okay then the rise in level will be what a gradient or fall in level will be a gradient okay therefore a rise or fall along the length of the road is called as what a gradient okay now we have been given with four types of gradient respectively in this the exceptional gradient is the one which possesses highest value okay the gradient which is provided in unavoidable circumstance is called as what exceptional gradient okay the remaining gradient we are going to discuss later in the respective questions for now remember exceptional gradient is the one with the highest value okay it is provided only in circumstances where we cannot avoid provision of such high value of gradient okay and we make sure that it last not more than 100 meter at a stretch okay we do not provide exceptional gradient more than 100 meter stretch we try to keep it below 100 meter length okay let's move to question number next okay which one of the following is also known as design gradient c ruling gradient is the one which is known as the designer gradient the design gradient okay and it is the reason because whenever we are providing ruling gradient the designer tries to attain that maximum permissible value and this maximum permissible value is called as what the ruling gradient okay vertical alignment generally adopt value less than or up to ruling gradient okay the designer will always try to keep the value of gradient up to ruling gradient or below the ruling gradient that's why it is also known as the design gradient okay let's move to question number next okay the minimum length of ascending gradient which a loaded truck can operate without undue reduction in speed is called as okay let's first see what the question is saying for example a gradient is there and a truck is there and a loaded truck is there now what will happen when the truck is negotiating or maneuvering a gradient or a leveled road having steep gradient over there what is going to happen the reduction in its speed in its tractive effort is going to take place okay when we are saying that it should operate without undue reduction means the range is 25 kmph okay for example if the truck was operating at a speed of 75 kmph then at such gradient the maximum reduction in speed is allowed to be 25 kmph means then while ascending this gradient its speed will become 50 kmph okay now let's see what that term is called as it is the critical length of grade okay the critical length of grade means it is the maximum length of ascending gradient 
एट विच वेन अ ट्रक और वेन अ लोडेड व्हीकल इज ऑपरेटिंग द ट्रैक्टिव एफर्ट द स्पीड ऑफ द व्हीकल विल गेट रिड्यूस बाय ट्वेंटी फाइव के एम पी एच मैक्सिमम इफ द स्पीड ऑफ द व्हीकल इज हंड्रेड के एम पी एच देन वाइल नेगोशिएटिंग दिस क्रिटिकल लेंथ दिस क्रिटिकल ग्रेड दिस क्रिटिकल ग्रेडियंट इट विल हैव इट्स स्पीड डिक्रीज टू सेवेंटी फाइव के एम पी एच ओके ट्वेंटी फाइव के एम पी एच रिडक्शन इज अलावेबल एंड दैट स्पेसिफिक लेंथ इज कॉल्ड एज क्रिटिकल लेंथ ऑफ ग्रेड ओके लेट्स मोट क्वेश्चन नंबर नेक्स्ट मैक्सिमम लेंथ फॉर एक्सेप्शनल ग्रेड कैन बी प्रोवाइडेड एक्सेप्शनल ग्रेडियंट हैज इट्स वैल्यू ऑफ हंड्रेड मीटर ओके वेन एवर वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग एक्सेप्शनल ग्रेडियंट इट्स मैक्सिमम वैल्यू प्रोवाइडेड इज हंड्रेड मीटर और लेस मीन्स वी एम टू प्रोवाइड अ एन एक्सेप्शनल ग्रेडियंट अप टू हंड्रेड मीटर देन वी विल ट्राई फॉर सम लेवल रोड देन अगेन वी विल प्रोवाइड द एक्सेप्शनल ग्रेडियंट इफ नेसेसरी ओके हंड्रेड मीटर और बिलो हंड्रेड मीटर इज द मैक्सिमम लेंथ परमिशिबल मैक्सिमम लेंथ फॉर एक्सेप्शनल ग्रेडियंट टू बी प्रोवाइडेड ऑल राइट लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर नेक्स्ट सो वेन ग्रेडियंट फॉर अ रोड नीड्स टू बी ग्रेटर दैन रूलिंग ग्रेडियंट विच वन वी आर अडॉप्टिंग वी अडॉप्ट लिमिटिंग ग्रेडियंट ओके इन अनअवॉर्डेबल सिचुएशन वेर प्रोवाइडिंग अ रोड विथ जेंटल ग्रेडियंट प्रोवाइडिंग अ रोड विथ जेंटल ग्रेडियंट बिकम्स इनइफेक्टिव और बिकम्स कॉस्ट इनइफेक्टिव मीन्स वेन एवर वी आर ट्राइंग टू प्रोवाइड अ ग्रेडेड रोड वी आर डूइंग वॉट वी आर ज्वाइनिंग द टू लेवल्स ऑफ द रोड नाउ द प्रॉब्लम इज वेन एवर वी आर हैविंग अ स्टीप ग्रेडियंट द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट व्हीकल मे नॉट बी एबल टू मैन्यूवर द रोड प्रॉपरली बट वेन वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग अ रोड विथ जेंटल ग्रेडियंट मीन्स लेस टीपर स्लो द प्रॉब्लम इज द बजेट इज गोइंग टू गेट strained okay there will be stress on the budget that's why in uh, in order to avoid the strain on the budget we are providing the limiting gradient with level road stretches in regular interval okay we are going be beyond the reg uh, ruling gradient only when the budget it a concern okay because providing a road with a gentle slope may be cost ineffective cost ineffective means provision of a road with leveled slope okay with leveled slope will become what cost ineffective that's why what we are doing we are providing a limiting gradient which is more than ruling gradient all right let's move to question number next fill in the blank gradient is adopted to take care of drainage along longitudinal direction c a road will always have a gradient across its longitudinal direction because whenever rain water will be there okay whenever drainage water will be there we will have to make sure that the rain water the drainage water is flowing away that's why some minimum slope is to be provided so that the drains alongside the road will carry all the drain water from the road okay along horizontal along cross section camber is there to take care of draining off of the rain water now also if camber is provided but when we are seeing the road in longitude and for example there is no slope or there is a continuous valley curve what is going to happen all the rain water is going to get stored in this section that's why in order to take care of draining off of the drain water or the rain water along longitudinal direction what we are doing we are going to provide a small value of gradient which is provided for taking care of this problem it is known as what minimum gradient all right let's move to question number next grade compensation is the process of it is the process of reducing the value of gradient at horizontal curve option c is the one here and now let's understand what grade compensation is c when we are compensating grade means when we are reducing the grade or gradient value it means that we are doing this for compensating the loss of tractive effort okay when both vertical gradient and horizontal curve are combining there will be a large strain on the vehicle the vehicle will be stress to 
कंपेन्सेट फॉर इट्स स्पीड बाय हैविंग मोर ट्रैक्टिव एफर्ट ओके एक्स्ट्रा ट्रैक्टिव फोर्स इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर नेगोशिएटिंग सच कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ हॉरिजॉन्टल कर एज वेल एज अ वर्टिकल ग्रेडियंट दैट्स वाय वेअर हॉरिजॉन्टल कर्व इज ऑल्सो देअर वेअर वर्टिकल ग्रेडियंट इज ऑल्सो रिक्वायर्ड वी डू वन थिंग दैट इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू रिड्यूज द हॉरिजॉन्टल कर्व देन वॉट वी कैन डू वी कैन रिड्यूज द वैल्यू ऑफ वर्टिकल ग्रेड और द ग्रेडियंट ओके सो दैट ईज ऑफ नेगोशिएटिंग सच कॉम्बिनेशन विल बी पॉसिबल फॉर द व्हीकल विदाउट एनी लॉस ऑफ ट्रैक्टिव एफर्ट नो एक्स्ट्रा ट्रैफिक ट्रैक्टिव एफर्ट विल बी रिक्वायर्ड ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड एज वॉट ग्रेड कंपेन्सेशन और रिडक्शन ऑफ ग्रेड वेयर रोड इज हैविंग बोथ थिंग्स हॉरिजेंटल कर एज वेल एज स्टीप ग्रेडियंट ओके लेट्स मोटो क्वेश्चन नंबर नेक्स्ट इफ आर इज द रेडियस ऑफ सर्कुलर कर ओके और इफ आर इज द रेडियस ऑफ सर्कल देन मैक्सिमम लिमिट ऑफ ग्रेड कंपेन्सेशन इज गिवन बाय इट इज गिवन बाय रिमेंबर द वैल्यू सेवेंटी फाइव बाय आर वेयर आर इज द रेडियस ऑफ सर्कल इन मीटर आर इज रेडियस ऑफ दैट सर्कल दैट कर इन मीटर नाउ दिस मैक्सिमम ग्रेड कंपेन्सेशन ओके दिस रूलिंग ग्रेडियंट दिस मैक्सिमम लिमिट ऑफ ग्रेड कंपेन्सेशन इज डन फॉर ग्रेडियंट मोर दैन फोर पर्सेंट ओके वेन एवर द ग्रेडियंट इज मोर दैन फोर पर्सेंट द ग्रेड कंपेन्सेशन इज डन मीन्स रिडक्शन इन ग्रेड इज डन वेअर द ग्रेडियंट वैल्यू इज मोर दैन फोर पर्सेंट देअर फोर इट ऑल्सो इम्प्लाइज दैट वी कैरी आउट ग्रेड कंपेन्सेशन अप टू फोर पर्सेंट ऑफ ग्रेडियंट इज लेफ्ट ओके वी विल डू द ग्रेड कंपेन्सेशन प्रोसेस वी विल कंटिन्यू द ग्रेड कंपेन्सेशन प्रोसेस अप टू फोर परसेंट ग्रेडियंट विल बी लेफ्ट ऑल राइट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन प्लीज विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कर हैज अपवर्ड कन्वेक्सिटी सी इज इट वैली कर नो इज इट सैक कर नो इज इट समिट कर येस देर फॉर ऑल ऑफ द अब ऑप्शन इज गेटिंग रोल्ड आउट हियर सी धिस काइंड ऑफ कर ओके दिस काइंड ऑफ ग्रेडियंट प्रोवाइडेड फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज द लेवल वन दिस इज द लेवल टू हियर एट लेवल वन रोड वॉज देअर पेमेंट वॉज देअर एट लेवल टू पेमेंट इज देअर ओके दिस काइंड ऑफ ग्रेडियंट इज अ समिट कर देन दिस काइंड ऑफ ग्रेडियंट प्रोवाइडेड फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज लेवल वन एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो लेवल वन बट फॉर सम अन अवॉर्डेबल सर्कमस्टन्स वी प्रोवाइडेड अ करवेचर ओवर हियर दिस इज ऑल्सो बिकम्स वॉट अ समिट कर एंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ दिस इज लेवल वन एंड दिस इज वॉट लेवल टू दिस इज ऑल्सो वॉट अ समिट कर समिट कर हैज अ कन्वेक्सिटी इन अपवर्ड डायरेक्शन कन्वेक्सिटी इन अपवर्ड डायरेक्शन मीन्स दिस इज कन्वेक्सिटी ओके एंड दिस इज कॉन्केविटी कन्वेक्सिटी इन अपवर्ड डायरेक्शन समिट कर डू हैव दैम ऑल राइट सो द क्वेश्चन इज सेंग रोड हम्प इज अ टाइप ऑफ रिलेटिवली स्मॉल समिट कर ओके रोड हम्प और a very small upward convexity which is present on a level road will be what a low summit curve okay for example you are having this level road then a small bump a small hump will be what a low summit curve the best example you can imagine regarding a road hump or a low value summit curve is your speed breaker level road is there in order to break the speed of the vehicle a speed breaker is provided a hump is there a bump is there it is what a low summit curve all right let's move to question number next criterion that governs the design of valley curve is is it allowable rate of change of centrifugal acceleration no then is it required headlight side distance yes is it required stopping side distance no therefore none of the above is getting ruled out now see when we are talking about valley curve valley curve is something like this for example this is level 1 then this is level 2 this is what a valley curve then again two level roads are there this is l this is also l then this curve provided to join this two level is called as what valley curve again for example this is level 1 and this is level 2 then the curve that we have utilized in order to join this level 1 and level 2 two road this is what a valley car now the problem with valley car is when the vehicle is driving at night at night driving headlight side distance is the most important 
distance okay the most important side distance at night driving is headlight side distance now the problem with the valet car is whenever a vehicle is negotiating a valet car the problem is the headlamp will be projecting its light in straight line that's why whatever obstacle whatever next vehicle which is on the valet car on or on the leveled road ahead will be there will not be visible from this vehicle that's why the governing criterion that a valet car has is the required headlight side distance means the valet car should not be such that when a vehicle is negotiating it then the next obstacle the next vehicle will be totally invisible okay the valet car value valet car value will be such that whatever the obstacle are in front of the vehicle negotiating that specific valet car will be visible there will not be any obstruction while the vehicle is maneuvering that vc or valet car the problem is not during day driving the problem is during night driving only day driving is not affected in case of valet car because whatever the vision the driver is requiring in his front is available because of the abundance of sunlight but the problem is regarding only during night driving all right so these were the questions regarding vertical design of alignment in the next topic we are going to cover some next topic from highway engineering okay till then take care